in its attempts to join the European Union, there has long been one major obstacle, Ukraine's endemic corruption. Now Kyiv has appointed a new anti-corruption investigator. 40-year-old Semen Krivonos was named at a special cabinet meeting on Monday. The position had been vacant for 11 months and the EU had been putting pressure on Ukraine to step up its efforts in the fight against rampant graft. The Ukrainian prime minister says the new appointment will pave the way toward European Union membership. With the appointment of the head of the National Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine, we can say that Ukraine has fulfilled all seven EU recommendations which were determined upon receiving candidate status. This demonstrates our determination in the question of integration in the EU and our desire to move on to the start of accession negotiations this year. The anti-corruption pressure group Transparency International rates Ukraine as one of the most corrupt countries in the world. In their annual ranking, Transparency listed Ukraine as 116th out of 180 countries surveyed. That puts Ukraine only slightly ahead of Russia, ranked 137th. On Monday, Russia's prosecutor general announced it was putting Transparency International on its list of undesirable organizations, a step seen as leading to outlawing it. And to break down these developments, I'd like to welcome Andriy Borovic. He's the executive director of Transparency International Ukraine. Welcome, Mr. Borovic. First, what can you tell me about the new head of Ukraine's anti-corruption bureau? Um, actually, this selection process went very, very fast, and uh, it is very important that it lasted only four, four, I think four, maybe five months, no more. And it was, as was said by the Prime Minister of Ukraine, was one of the requirements for Ukraine in order to move on with the negotiations for the candidacy. Uh, the, the new head uh, was never, never was before as investigator, uh, but the main role uh, being the head of this institution is actually the managing role. Uh, there is lots of uh, rumors about his connections with the current uh, current government, but we always trying to be positive, and we will see how uh, how how actually the NABU uh, will change and what they will do in the future. Uh, and I hope that the investigations will be uh, more more of them, and they will, that they will speed up. All right, let's look at the bigger picture here then. Why did Ukraine get such a poor rating from Transparency International? Um, honestly, I, I disagree that it is so poor because if we will look historically, where was Ukraine during Yanukovych times in 2013, for example, Ukraine had only 25 uh, points. Now it's 33. Yes, it is still quite far from the average in the European Union. But for these 10 years, we added eight points and Ukraine among other 200 countries in, in the ranking uh, is ranked as 15th with the most progress. So it means that the problem of the corruption is big all around the world and Ukraine moving in the right direction. We did a number of reforms. Uh, some of them were not aiming at fighting the corruption, but aiding the transparency and delivering better services for the citizens. And I, I think that uh, we, we go in the right way, but we need definitely to speed up in order to um, stop any talks about the level of corruption in Ukraine. And I think that we have everything that is uh, needed for us in order to move on with that. How hard is it to advance in the right direction with a war going on in the country? Um, it's it's not an easy thing because there is lots of um, security risks. For example, Ukraine uh, was was one of the uh, leading countries in, in the region in, in the sense of opening the information about the state. Uh, we had a very large number of open registries. Now lots of information is closed, as I said, because of the security reasons. But uh, some of the events that happened during last year, such as uh, vote for the anti-corruption strategy, anti-corruption program, appointment of the new head of anti-corruption prosecutor's office, today's event as uh, appointment of the head of the main investigative body of uh, at the top level corruption actually shows that we can continue uh, doing the reforms and of course not as fast as we want but uh, we still can do the reforms while our army is fighting at the battlefield so it is possible uh, and I hope that this year we will continue doing this. Many blame Ukraine's troubled historic relationship with Russia for its corruption problems. What do you think are the root causes here? Uh, there is 
there is not so many, but there is some of the different scientific uh, hypotheses why why the level of uh, corruption in Ukraine is at that level which we have. Uh, and I think that the Russian influence is definitely in place because historically uh, it, it was the case uh, when in the even in, during the Soviet times because of the scars of of many goods for the people it was. Um, just a common way to get something in order to give or to pay extra to those who have access access to those uh, to those things. So it can be one of the reasons, but uh, also I would say that uh, lack of any vision of fighting the corruption, and it was never such a big problem unless we had a Yanukovych mm -hmm. uh, as, as a president. It was never in, in the top level of agenda in Ukraine, not only within the government, but even within the population. But since 2014, I must say, and even now, when you're asking, according to sociology polls, what would be as a main disappointment for uh, for you as Ukrainian after the end of the war, number one, people saying that the, that the Russia will stay unpunished, but number two, that the corruption will still exist. Mm. So uh, I think that with such a huge support in a uh, fight of the corruption from general population, there is no other way for the government and politicians to move on uh, with, with this uh, problem yeah. and finally uh, to end it. And of course, the second reason is our way to the EU. These are the requirements which we want to uh, fulfill. Yeah, I want to get to what was just announced about your organization. You know, in Europe, there's only one country you rate as more corrupt than Ukraine, and that is Russia. Moscow just declared your organization to be undesirable. Why is Moscow so sensitive about the work you do, and what does that mean for your work going forward? Um, I think that the Russia is just showing... Uh, I, I don't know what they're trying to show with, with this decision, but as soon as they become more and more uh, closed as a country, and I am as a Ukrainian cannot blame them on, on this because uh, they they came to Ukraine and they invaded my country. But in general, uh, this is the next step after that their uh, very famous law about the foreign agents. So, so it basically they saying that everything that is foreign is not welcome uh, in Russia. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm just even surprised that they did it only now, not not even earlier last year. For We're example. going to have to leave it there. Andrei Borovic of Transparency International, thank you so much. Thank you.